السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر فورٹی ٹو آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان آفٹر ہیونگ ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ ٹاک آل دی اسٹیپس انوالو ان دی برانڈنگ پروسیس آئی اسٹارٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی امپورٹنس آف ایکسیکیوشن آف آل دو اسٹیپس اوور دا لاسٹ فیو لیکچرس And together you will recall that together they talked about the measuring your brand's performance and then about the need to have an organization compatible with achieving those kind of executions. The meaning, the need to have an organization which really enables you to execute all uh, these strategies the way you planned them and the way you crafted them. We know the whole process. all the concepts that um, form that process. We also have the organization. We now get on to the final step. The final step is all about planning your brand, meaning your brand's movement. And the brand's movement is going to be all about execution of the planning that you already have in place. The rest of the lectures, are going to be devoted to brand planning. However, before I move on to how to come up with um, the rightmost plan under any given circumstances, uh, let me have the opportunity of talking about how you go about branding in services. Service brands, so to say, are the ones I did not really touch upon in detail. I have been giving you the examples here and there in relation to the various concepts, but uh, how to brand a service and leverage that as a branding process is something I'm going to talk about now because I think an understanding of um, the, the similarities of the branding process relating services with branding process relating uh, tangible brand products is very important. before we start talking about the brand plan. Branding and services is gaining popularity. And let me also tell you that there is no legal distinction between tangible product brands, which I may call TPBs, and the service brands, meaning SBs. The distinction between the two areas is just about economic. There are many similarities between service brands and tangible product brands when it comes to the branding process. And I can state that uh, the branding process is just about the same in case of services uh, also. The meaning you go through a similar kind of uh, the product development process which involves developing brand's picture, with the brand's promise, with the brand's contract, and with the brand's positioning. The whole effort in terms of for the services also revolves around your positioning concept. There is uh, a growing realization on part of um, the service sellers that um, in order to uh, sell and leverage their services, that they've got to get into the uh, concepts of uh, differentiation and segmentation. These two concepts lead to the concept of positioning. And uh, having the right position uh, means that uh, the, the brand is going to make its mark in the market as long as uh, all strategies are in place. Because you cannot go for the right position unless you really have uh, identified the right segment and uh, given your product uh, some level of differentiation. And then you start communicating that position to the target audience and the process goes on. This is what we all know by now. So in other words, all the service sellers have this realization on their part that they have to have a lot of distinction and differentiation on part of their products in order to stand out of the crowd, the meaning in relation to the competition that they have. They all are in a branding age and unless They treat the products that they sell as proper brands. There's no way that those products are going to be leveraged. With the exception of 
uh, banking, insurance, and uh, get some computer services. Uh, the most of um, these services are a combination of products and services. Restaurants, for example, airlines, hotels. So what I'm talking about is that while these services are sold, customers do get in contact with the, the tangible products also. Either they get into contact with those products or they use those. Restaurants. You could buy something very tangible, but it is a service which is sold as uh, the last part of the product. So what is it uh, that really is uh, the different between uh, the products, meaning tangible products and services? That is something we really have to look into. So in other words, we are going to concentrate on the service element and to see what is it that we need to do in order to brand that. The basic uh, the difference lies uh, in relation to four different elements when it comes to branding your services. One is the factor of uh, the intangibility. You cannot see a service, you cannot feel it, and you cannot touch it. Perishability is the, the second element, which means that we cannot really store these services uh, like you store inventories. The Seeds not sold today are lost forever. So that is what is meant by the perishability. Inseparability, a very important element of the services, the meaning the one which really differentiates services from tangible products. And this means that you really cannot separate services from products. A service is sold at the time it is delivered. So that is what is meant by inseparability. The fourth factor is that of variability. Services are offered by the people who vary in temperament, in behavior, and also in their values. So one service offered at one particular time may not be the same when it is offered at a different time by a different person. So these are the basic elements which uh, differentiate services from products. All this can be summarized in two important statements. One is that uh, the operations and marketing uh, in case of uh, the service selling are more intertwined in comparison with uh, the tangible products because they're sold at just about the same time. The banks and restaurants are uh, the excellent examples of uh, this statement. The other is that uh, everybody within the organization has got to be educated on the core value of the service which is to be delivered. And that calls for uh, the need uh, of uh, the internal marketing. So uh, we can see that uh, service selling, uh, although uh, is subject to the same uh, the branding process uh, of uh, the brand picture, uh, the brand promise, uh, the brand positioning and all that, but then at the same time, it may be a little more difficult because of the elements that I've just talked about. What are those difficulties? Let us talk about those one by one. Uh, now first of all, we can say that the services can be copied easily. It is because of this factor that the service sellers find it hard to bring about meaningful differentiation when they start marketing their products. For the simple reason that uh, a service product cannot be uh, showed or demonstrated the way a tangible product uh, can be showed and demonstrated. And uh, it doesn't really take uh, as much investment to develop a service as it does to develop a tangible product. You have to go through the manufacturing process and uh, what you're supposed to be doing in order to get all that. Uh, is uh, known to you all. Whereas service selling is something which uh, can be started by just putting up a small office or a small shop, and from there, you just go on. So this is one of the difficulties involved in selling of services. The second is that uh, the services are uh, hard to summarize and um, communicate. Why is it hard to uh, summarize the services is uh, again because of the intangibility of services. When you are dealing with uh, the tangible product, 
it can be easily communicated because of the uh, physical features that uh, you really can throw light on. And uh, the, through highlighting those features, the, the communication process becomes easy or it is not as difficult as it is in case of services. It is because of the difficulty of expression that um, services generally have slogans. This is not to say that uh, tangible product brands do not have slogans, but slogans work more uh, in case of services only because uh, it is the only way to express the inner core of the product through an outward expression. And in other words, it is only through that expression that we can talk about the service, which otherwise cannot be shown or demonstrated. To what extent that expression is appropriate or not appropriate is a separate issue, which really brings us back to the concept of positioning, how well it is positioned, meaning the product, how well the brand's picture was created, and the promise it really carries and uh, the level of differentiation in terms of the benefits which the product offers, all those things could have got to be taken into consideration uh, before uh, you start uh, expressing yourself uh, with the help of a slogan. So uh, if the slogan is uh, effective, communication is effective, and uh, the service really stands uh, differentiated, uh, very well um, positioned into the minds of the consumers. So it is a big challenge when it comes to the selling services. Um, the other uh, problem uh, that we have uh, in terms of uh, the selling services is that uh, the quality is hard to evaluate. Why it is hard to evaluate, it is hard for the consumer uh, who really is not in a position to draw uh, the right most comparison between one service and another service because of um, the intangibility and also because of the, the variability, um, the consumer might have uh, a very good experience at uh, one particular point in time and may not have as much uh, good an experience at another point in time. So uh, it becomes difficult for the consumers to draw comparisons uh, between different services. It also is uh, kind of difficult for uh, the sellers uh, because uh, they uh, find it hard to communicate. And uh, this you know, takes us uh, back to the um, concept or the, the difficulty which I talked as uh, the difficulty number one. It um, really offers uh, the buyers the problem of uh, not being able to size up or judge the value for money when it comes to uh, the brand they buy. And this further leads to uh, pricing problem uh, on uh, uh, the part of the sellers. Only because uh, the customers really are uh, in a fix as to how much value they are uh, getting out of uh, the buying one particular service, uh, the sellers find it difficult at times to go for uh, the rightmost the pricing mechanism and uh, the rightmost pricing point. Another difficulty which is offered by service selling is that of the standardization. Now this really is one of the most important factors that we really have to keep in mind because the services really start getting a hard time in terms of selling when it comes to the problem of standardization. Because of the involvement of the human factor like I talked about earlier, standardizing your routines and procedures becomes a challenge. Now, this is not to say that uh, standardization cannot be brought about. There are different angles uh, from which standardization of routines becomes challenging. The paradox in um, this area uh, comes in when uh, there's a conflict between uh, the motivation and empowerment. Let me try to explain these two concepts of uh, the motivation and empowerment in the context of uh, problem of standardization. Just assume a person selling a service, sitting in a small office, being highly motivated and uh, selling the service in the most efficient and effective way, only because he's empowered. When I say he's empowered, that really means 
that the person has the power to make so many different decisions at this spot of the moment to be able to deliver that particular service efficiently and effectively. So the efficiency and effectiveness will become a function of uh, motivation and empowerment. Now, suppose for a second that uh, this business is growing and it is growing fast. The company or the business uh, has to uh, multiply its uh, selling points and uh, it has to have uh, more people. Not all the people employed by the company are going to be as motivated as that particular person has been. Because of, in the first place, uh, the nature of um, different personnel, the different difference in behavior, in values, and so on and so forth. And also, because the business now has become focused on standardizing routines in order to more effectively manage the operation, which is growing fast. To manage all that, you start incorporating so many different standards. And that is something you know, I've been talking about uh, in relation to different concepts uh, all over the course. And uh, because of those standards, uh, what happens is the element of empowerment gets diminished. And the same person you know, who felt so much motivated to deliver that service that efficiently and effectively that he became kind of an example for the whole lot starts feeling a little less motivated, if not demotivated, because he feels that the part of the power he had is slipping away from him. So that is where the challenge of the standardizing routines and procedures that comes in when you start selling services. The imposition of controls, in other words, bring in a conflict between motivation and empowerment. The moment you start prescribing those controls, things change and the challenge pops up. And you've got to deal with that challenge in a way that uh, the management process still remains very efficient and the people still remain motivated and the service which is sold to your target audience uh, still remains very uniformed in terms of its delivery. So that's where the challenge is. Another problem uh, that we face while we sell uh, the services is uh, that we cannot store inventories. Unlike tangible product brands, you just cannot store services in response to uh, the fluctuating demand levels uh, with uh, the variation in seasons. So what I'm saying is uh, if you are into services and uh, you get into a season uh, which is high sales seasons, uh, you just cannot store your services. Uh, in anticipation of uh, the higher level of sales relating to that particular season. What you can do is only improve your service to cope with that challenge. An excellent example uh, relating this uh, syndrome uh, that could be payment of utility bills. You know how you guys could have to queue up uh, in front of the banks uh, in order to pay your bills. Now, this is one example of a uh, service seller having a challenge of making sure that customers do not run into that kind of discomfort. An example could also be given in relation to a retail outlet which has stocked various inventories in anticipation of the Eid season. But then when the shopping pressure builds up, the same retail outlet just cannot cope with the payment uh, procedures because of uh, not having uh, a compatible the number of cash registers um, with uh, the number of customers uh, who have walked into the store. So this is a challenge which uh, the service seller has to face and uh, then come up with uh, some ingenious ways of coping uh, with these kind of pressures. Having talked about uh, the, the problems that uh, the service sellers face, we must also look into uh, the solutions. Service selling is uh, difficult, but then at the same time, uh, there are certain solutions which uh, make these problems soluble. What are those uh, the solutions? Let us talk about those. The first one is uh, that you have to capitalize on additional elements. 
But what is that? Um, let me explain. The service selling is uh, not full of handicaps. It might have uh, sounded like that so far, but the, but the fact is that uh, while you sell services, there are certain elements uh, which are additional elements, and uh, those are not there uh, while you sell tangible products. And uh, if capitalized uh, very sensibly and strategically, those really give you a competitive advantage in terms of uh, the leveraging your brand. Those elements are additional three Ps. That's the way you know, those could be expressed. The first P stands for people, and the second P stands for a process, and uh, the third P stands for physical evidence. So in other words, what we are talking about is the possibility of uh, cashing in on these three additional elements in order to give strength and power to our brand that basically is a service brand. Now, let us try to understand what these three additional Ps really mean and what really is meant by people and by process and by the physical evidence. Well, talking about the people, I would like to draw your attention back to the example of the courier. The reason uh, that this particular courier service is uh, the market leader and enjoying a price premium uh, is because of the people it has uh, in place. And uh, whatever strength this company has uh, owes to the quality of the human resource, meaning people the company has. And uh, the next thing which really comes into the mind is if this company has uh, the people uh, working so efficiently and so effectively, they've got to be uh, part of a process uh, which uh, let them uh, work in a way that uh, they end up being as efficient and as effective that uh, they make their company uh, the market leader. So that is uh, an example of uh, uh, the people and the process. First of all, you have to capitalize on the quality of people that you have. When people enter any business, not all of them are aces. You have you know, different uh, kinds of people. And the objective and the challenge before you is to train and educate those people by your standards. And uh, I did talk about the uh, problem of standardization in relation to service selling. So while it is a problem, the, the businesses also have to look into the opportunity and the ways and means to address to this particular problem. And you can address to this particular problem only by educating your people, meaning internal marketing. And when you carry out internal marketing, it is about educating your people in relation to certain systems, procedures, routines, and standards. The ones that your people are that used to those standards and they are following those day in and day out, then the quality of service rendered is going to be of a very high quality. And uh, we can also say that uh, bringing these uh, elements uh, together, uh, the meaning uh, the people, good people, and um, good process, which is very well structured and very well defined, we really can address the problem of uh, uh, conflict uh, between um, motivation and empowerment. So it is uh, because of the incorporation of uh, all these standards and uh, then having those standards followed by all the people within the organization, you make sure that uh, your standards are executed in the best possible way. Another example of the people and the process could be that of an airline, which is communicating with the target audience about different kinds of foods which the airline is willing to serve to its passengers in light of their varying sociocultural backgrounds. So if an airline, in other words, is willing to show that kind of flexibility in offering uh, different formats of meals, so to say, then um, it has to have you know, good people who are in a position to you know, put all that into place and then deliver the promise uh, the way it was made.
And if the passengers really trust this airline and they start buying the tickets, that testifies the, the positioning of that particular airline. It also takes care of the problem of the expression. And if the airline is expressing its position from this particular point of view, then the expression becomes easy because this could be one of the ways of the outward expressions of the inner core of the service that you sell. And if the airline thinks that this really could be the point of positioning, if it really could be, then it really can start communicating that point. And through the people, it can prove that uh, it has just about the right quality of people who can uh, deliver that promise. Not only that, again, this uh, the airline also seems to be having uh, the right process in place, which really enables uh, the, those uh, the people within the company to execute what is uh, demanded of them. It is a big challenge, but nevertheless, it is being met by not one airline, but the many of them. So the airline, in other words, is able to do that because of having a process uh, which is backed by or which may be backed by the latest uh, technological advances, the meaning information technology. The reason I'm talking about this because this is something which uh, in present day's world has become the backbone of uh, the sophisticated processes that form the foundation of uh, so many businesses, not only the service selling, but also tangible the product selling. And I would well like to draw your attention uh, toward uh, the area of uh, direct marketing and direct communication with uh, the help of internet. What this airline really is in a position to do uh, is that uh, it can not only build up a beautiful data bank, but also keep on improving it with the passage of time in relation to the more and more passengers that travel this airline. And again, in relation to their uh, diverse sociocultural backgrounds. Isn't it a beauty that uh, the US part of uh, that particular airline know that you, you have passengers belonging to this particular uh, part of the region and that particular part of the region and this is how you should be planning your strategies in terms of servicing food while having passengers on board. It is a great advantage which the airline can have to itself. So it is the information which basically forms the process which uh, highlights the strength of the airline it has to itself or to the brand it is selling. Getting back to the courier service, let me now explain the third element, the meaning the third peak, which is what you call physical evidence. Just think about look at this uh, setup. Why is it? that uh, the largest courier service in our country has so many outlets that look so much uniformed and uh, they all have the same manifestations in terms of their appearance, in terms of their decor, in terms of the uniforms of uh, the people who are working for uh, uh, the company and uh, so many other appearances. It is because you really want to develop a very strong physical evidence of your appearance, of your existence. So this really is the importance of the physical evidence. In other words, if you are selling a service, however beautiful and effective it may be, but if you do not really have um, uh, the support of the physical evidence, then the selling is not going to be that much effective. In other words, the while you are selling that kind of a standardized service, you've got to look into the branding process or the product development process just about in the same way as you look into the tangible products. Just like you like to create an identity of a tangible product by creating the one particular package 
that by the same token, you have to have the same appearance while you're selling services. That is why you have the same decor. That is why you have the same colors, the same symbols. The symbols and imagery and the slogans could really take on added importance here because you've got to could highlight could from a distance. This is the way you exist and this is the physical evidence uh, that really support your uh, service selling. Uh, physical evidence also uh, takes on uh, the added importance in terms of uh, restaurants. Let me take you back to the example of uh, the fast food setup that uh, started its venture with the help of uh, direct delivery service. And uh, when you compare that with another restaurant, uh, which is also into direct delivery, but direct delivery service of that particular restaurant is supported also by the physical evidence, the meaning by uh, beautiful, standardized, the uniform kind of outlets, then that restaurant stands the better chances of the being uh, stronger in the marketplace. So that really is a stronger and a more powerful brand. Here also, the need to be uh, the very uh, sensitive to the decor and uh, the standardization of all the routines uh, that takes on uh, a lot of importance, significance, because of the reasons which you know by now. Another uh, the solution to the problems of uh, the service selling is uh, that you've got to innovate all the time, meaning you've got to innovate continuously. The reason you have to continually uh, improve your product because it is going to be copied by others very quickly. So differentiation, in other words, is the name of the game. If you keep on innovating, you're doing that because you have you know, good people in place and you, those people are supported by a beautiful process. Or in other words, they are part of the process that I just talked about. So with the help of uh, the people and the process, you are in a position to continuously improving your product and the differentiating it from your competitors. This really takes the importance, a lot of importance in terms of restaurants and also in terms of banks. If you take a hard look at the financial products being sold by banks nowadays, you will know what I'm talking about. I mean, just look at uh, the credit cards and uh, the different kinds of credits available to you, the schemes uh, offered by banks in terms of deposits and um, uh, car loans and home financing and so on and so forth. Uh, these are different examples uh, of uh, the highly differentiated uh, the products uh, which uh, banks uh, have introduced in our market. Uh, you can also have uh, the very highly differentiated products uh, when it comes to insurance, for example, um, that is a different issue that uh, the insurance sector in our country is uh, uh, not as uh, the consumer centric as uh, the banking is and uh, the priority of uh, that sector uh, seems to be the big accounts in terms of uh, the industry, uh, I mean uh, the different industries and uh, the not um, uh, retail uh, the consumers, uh, the barring uh, you know, car insurance and uh, the life insurance. but. Um, the other areas uh, the seem to stay the kind of untapped. I'm talking about this sector just for the sake of uh, the giving you uh, examples um, that they may clarify that you're thinking about um, the differentiation and uh, the innovation. So in other words, what I'm talking about is that uh, the service sellers have got to have a good human resource, meaning good people, who are part of a good process and who really can give practical shape to the um, concepts of uh, uh, differentiation and innovation to the service products. And uh, yet, in other words, I can uh, say that uh, the, the process of uh, the branding in terms of uh, the selling services has got to be the same, just about the same as it is for tangible product brands. The meaning you've got to come up with uh, the right customer-based model for your service brands. Let us now talk about uh, the uh, third solution which we have uh, to ourselves if we happen to be service sellers. That is to improve distribution. 
But just like uh, in the case of uh, the tangible uh, product brands, you have to have a very good distribution system for selling your services because you would like to have an excellent outreach. And I think that this can be explained with the help of uh, the example of banks. Look at the number of branches which different banks could have all over the country. The reason they have so many branches is because they really want to create convenience for their customers to come and make transactions at the points of their preference. That is the point of sale, just like I talked about in relation to the tangible brands, I mean tangible products. So by the same token, you have to have a very effective, a very intensive, and at the same time, a very extensive outreach. So what I'm talking about is that the more the areas covered by a bank, uh, the higher uh, the number of uh, transactions or the higher the sales. Banks in today's the market have become very customer centric. And uh, I already have given you examples of the kinds of products they all are introducing. And that is one indication and testimony rather uh, toward the fact that uh, they certainly develop customer-based uh, the models to develop their uh, the brands and then leverage those through a process which is very similar uh, to that of uh, tangible product brands. Another uh, solution to the problems that we're talking about is that you can make your brand tangible. Now, how you can you really make your brand tangible is through the, uh, the physical evidence that I talked about. So in other words, this solution is uh, uh, in continuation of uh, the, the concept of uh, the physical evidence, the only important thing is that you've got to standardize the looks and uh, the appearances, the, the manifestations that are so much standardized and uh, that are so much unique that uh, the people really acknowledge uh, your identity as uh, a strong service seller. Just like um, in the case of uh, the tangible product brands, you try to uh, sum up all the benefits that your service offers onto positioning, meaning the outward expression of the inner core of the service that you're selling that has got to be expressed on the platform of positioning, which basically is the, the fundamental uh, relating uh, the uh, branding process. And uh, it all depends how you really would like to the position the service that you are selling. Let us go back to the example of the airline all over again. And suppose that this airline is highlighting its position of hospitality. Now, how is it that the airline really can sum up the benefits on positioning? Uh, it could be through the picture of a good-looking air hostess with a smile that talks about hospitality. Now, it doesn't end there. Uh, it, of course, you know, starts there in a way that uh, the communication process is kicked off, but uh, what it really boils down to is the ability of the airline to uh, offer the kind of hospitality it is talking about. So uh, if it is summing up the benefits uh, the, the way it is uh, delivering those, then the, the position is uh, well taken and uh, well occupied in the minds of your customers and uh, you are successful in uh, the branding your service the way that you are successful in the branding your tangible products. If um, there's an airline that uh, may like to highlight its positioning on uh, some other uh, platform, for example, the maintenance, then the airline would uh, like to talk in different terms. I think that goes without saying, and uh, the, the positioning has got to come up accordingly. The summing up of uh, those benefits is going to take a very different shape in comparison with the hospitality that I've just talked about. Be mindful of that. That's very important. Another uh, solution that we have to ourselves as uh, the service sellers is uh, using of testimonials. Uh, those services which uh, really cannot be summed up on positioning have to have the support of uh, the testimonials by celebrities or by those people uh, who are important and uh, who really mean something uh, to the target audience. If uh, you cannot really go for uh, the kind of uh, the campaign uh, as I talked about in relation to the airline, or if you cannot show an, um, an umbrella, for example, if you are uh, selling insurance, if you cannot show a bird's nest, 
um, you know, full of eggs with uh, the mother bird sitting right on top of it, uh, protecting it, then you've got to make use of the testimonials. You have to have uh, those people who really can talk about you know, the benefits and uh, they can talk in terms of uh, the benefits that they have derived uh, out of the service uh, that you sold them. Uh, nothing uh, that gives credibility to service more than uh, somebody important telling the target audience that uh, that somebody is uh, highly satisfied with um, the service that uh, you are selling. So it goes uh, without saying that uh, while you use uh, testimonials, the claim that you're making uh, through the celebrity has got to be uh, very consistent with the positioning. And uh, we are getting back to the same old concepts that uh, we've been talking about all along the course. And uh, I don't really have to throw uh, more light on that. So as long as uh, you are very consistent with the, the positioning, the testimonials are going to be useful and uh, they're going to have their own utility. So this is uh, one of the ways that uh, we solve our problems in relation to service selling. Another uh, thing that we really can do is uh, develop a very good relationship with uh, all the um, customers that we have while we sell services. We know that uh, in most of the cases uh, when we sell services, we create a data bank and uh, then we maintain that data bank. If you are a bank, you have the name of each and every customer. If you are an insurance company, the same happens. And if you are a courier service, again, the same situation. So you, you can well imagine the, the kind of benefit that you have in comparison with selling those products that you sell through so many intermediaries. And while go, going through the layers of intermediaries, it is very hard for you to keep track of the final consumers. But in the case of services, not having any channels in between Okay, what happens is that okay, you are in a beautiful position to maintain a data bank. And okay, you really can um, improve that data bank with okay, all the transactions that take place. And in case you know, those transactions okay, stop taking place, okay, you can get back to those customers asking them questions. Okay, why is it that uh, they're not coming back to you? So this is the benefit. And this is the way that you develop a relationship. So whether the customer is coming back and back again or is not coming back, you certainly have an opportunity of maintaining that relationship and uh, the opportunity of um, uh, communicating with uh, your target audience and, and loyal customers and dissatisfied customers at the same time um, whenever you think it is important to do so. So what is imperative here is that customers have got to be cultivated and uh, a continuous touch with them is of uh, very high significance. Uh, when that happens, uh, what you can do is uh, you can communicate to uh, all the new developments that are taking place. Again, you see that uh, if you're a bank, you can talk about the new product that you have introduced. If you are an insurance company or a courier service or any uh, entity you know, of uh, that nature, you really can talk about the development of uh, the new product uh, that you are going to create or the innovation that, that has taken place in relation to an existing product. You also are in a beautiful position to go for the brand dynamics. And by brand dynamics, what I really mean is the measuring your brand's performance. I think it goes without saying that you have a ready-made data bank which is going to allow you to pick those respondents that you think uh, really can be uh, contacted with relative ease and then you can ask questions uh, on so many uh, different strategic variables of measurement. You can talk about customer loyalty, you can talk about uh, uh, pricing, you can talk about the positioning and so on and so forth. I mean, all those uh, the variables uh, which you think are uh, very important in the context of the services that you are selling. And uh, uh, that also becomes part of the brand plan, uh, which I'm going to talk about in the next lecture. Another uh, thing uh, which you really can uh, achieve uh, with the help of uh, developing a continuous relationship with your customers is the loyalty factor. We keep uh, discussing loyalty from so many different angles. But here you see in terms of uh, solving the uh, service selling problem, 
we really are in a better position to maintain a continuous contact with our customers and therefore we are in a better position to make those customers more consistent by providing a good service and consistent customers are going to be loyal customers. Another thing which I really want to talk about is that you have to industrialize the service. Now, this is the last factor, but this is one of the most important factors. And uh, the example of this factor, I would like to give you with the help of, uh, you know, any fast food restaurant which you uh, think is uh, your favorite. Uh, all the fast food restaurants in our country are the big chains. And uh, the way, you know, they prepare their food and the way they uh, sell that uh, is known to all of us. They really have industrialized the service by making routines and procedures that are so much standardized that it, is, it has become kind of an industrialized process. So what it really boils down to is that the process that you are going to create or you have created for your service has to be so much standardized that it should look and it should have the essence of an industrialized concept. Make sure that all the variables of uh, the standard procedures do create and achieve a balance between um, motivation and empowerment. That is uh, very important. And uh, if you really can achieve that, you are managing your service brand beautifully. The last factor is the education of uh, the staff members. Unless communication takes place to the effect of um, educating your people about the delivery of the service, meaning the way it is going to be delivered and the essence of that delivery, uh, there is just about no way that those people are going to be very effective while delivering that service. So in other words, uh, the people uh, within the company have got to have uh, a complete desire and uh, an intention, uh, a passionate um, involvement in uh, the delivering the service that you are selling. And when you have those ingredients, uh, your uh, the service brand is going to make its mark just like uh, your uh, tangible product brand does. So this is uh, all about uh, the service uh, the brands I really wanted to talk about. And uh, before time really runs out, let me give you a very brief recap. Uh, it is uh, not dif different from um, tangible product brands. Uh, the branding and services is uh, very similar uh, in terms of the process that we undertake. And um, the process is uh, the same in the meaning, uh, the brand's vision, then uh, the brand's uh, promise, then uh, the brand's positioning, uh, brand's um, channels and uh, the brand's communication, and so on and so forth. All the steps and phases that uh, you make use of uh, the while uh, building your tangible brands are made use of while you are working with your service brands. So in other words, as a summary, the service brands have got, have got to be taken into the same light uh, and that is the light of uh, being customer centric. That is the lesson of uh, today's lecture and uh, with this I say thank you and Allah Hafiz, I look forward to talking with you in the next lecture.